Do you have the Iron Die? You know, that really good sword in The Witcher 3, but you can't figure out a consistent way to level it up. Well, in today's video, I will show you three methods that involve infinite respawns so that you can level up your favorite silver sword without wasting any time. Before we start, we need to look at the mechanics behind leveling up the Iron Knight. To level up your Iron Knight, you need to kill an enemy when it's fully charged. This will increase its damage by two and reset the charge to zero. It's also worth mentioning that if you take any damage while in this fight, you will lose some of your charges. Therefore, Quen is a very good choice for safety reasons. If you want to read more in depth about the Iron Knight, I have linked a page in the description to the wiki. With that out of the way, it's time to look at the first out of three methods that will help you level up your sword. The reason I use the name Trotheim Glitch for this method is very, very simple. The location of the glitch is very close to the village of Trotheim. It's also worth mentioning that if you haven't done the quest with Lambert following the thread, or if you haven't been to Trotheim before, there will be a lot of bandits here. Looking at the map, you will find the location for the glitch here. As you can see, the location is very close to the fast travel point of Trotheim on the island of Faro. So head over to the assigned location and here's where two bandits will spawn at level 14. To consistently spawn them, you need to walk around a bit, walk away a bit from the location. Like It's not far, you, you just need to walk away. You can either walk up this hill or walk a bit towards Trotheim or whatever. As long as you walk away from the location a bit, they should spawn. My experience with this glitch is that the first time always takes the longest. So uh, don't be afraid if it takes a couple of tries to like spawn them. After the first two, with my experience, it goes a lot faster. You just literally need to turn around, run like 10 meters, and they will be back. That's basically how you respawn them forever, and you can utilize these two enemies all the time, whenever you want. So as you can see, they are here. Uh, the easiest way to kill them, assuming that you are overleveled and not using enemy upscaling, is just to go in with a Quen and then whirl your way to victory, like you will see me doing multiple times here. Because if you have severance on your Arandite, the other enemy won't be able to hit you, which means that you won't lose any charges. However, if you're playing with enemy upscaling on and you don't want to turn it off, or if you're a similar level so that your silver sword barely does any damage to them, then just hit them with your steel sword or your fists a couple of times before, get them low and then apply the same methods. It, it's really that simple. Just make sure that your steel sword doesn't have any bleeding effects or any burning effects, because if these effects kill the enemy instead of the Arandite, then you won't level up your sword. A good sword that works for all different levels is the griffin school swords the griffin school steel swords doesn't have any burning or any bleeding effects on them as you can see when they are dead just run a few meters away and you will see that they respawn almost immediately if you repeat this method you will be able to farm your erandite consistently really really fast and the best thing about this method is that it works all the time no matter where you are in the story. You can basically do this method as soon as you reach Skellige and on forward, whenever you want in the story. End game, early game, mid game, it doesn't really matter. You can do it whenever you want and whenever it suits you. Moving over to the next method, we will cover the Hansa base. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm sorry if I do it wrong. Either way, these bases came with the Blood and Wine DLC and there are three of them, as you can see marked out on the map right now. Most of the time I like to use, this is another hard word, Mont Crane Castle, Crane Castle, whatever, right? Located here, that's all you need to know. Why do I use this base most of the time? Well, it's very easy to fast travel from and to, and it also has a lot of enemies. So how does this method work? Well, it's very simple, actually. All you need to do is to go to one of these bases and start killing your enemies, except the leader. You can't kill the leader because then this method doesn't work. You kill everyone else but the leader. You might also see a person with a torch if you see him he will try to light a fire and call reinforcements you can stop him if you'd like and call the reinforcements later by igniting the fire yourself 
So once you're done, when you have killed everyone, all you need to do is fast travel. Because fast travel will reset the base with new enemies. So if you fast travel away and come back, then you will have new enemies. This is obviously very good for a lot of loot and money as well. Because if you loot everyone, fast travel to the Grandmaster, sell it for a lot of money, fast travel back and you will have all the enemies back. As long as you don't kill the leader. Remember that you can't kill the leader because then the enemies won't respawn. As you can see on the footage I'm showing you as well, there's a lot of bandits here, right? There's a lot, a lot of bandits, which is both good and bad. These enemies are obviously a bit higher, so it's harder to kill all of them with your iron diet, or it's barely impossible, right? If you're not like really over leveled. The same method that you used if you have enemy upscaling on uh, during the trotting glitch, works here as well obviously you hit them with your steel sword first you get them low and then you finish them off with your iron diet just make sure that you have your 10 charges obviously however sometimes there will be too many enemies here like you won't be able to like focus on killing them with iron diet and it's just going to be messy and everything so you might need to clear a few people before with your steel sword so they only have like four enemies left or something that you can do this method with because if you have like 10 15 people on you it's basically going to be impossible to try and like zone people out with your iron diet and finish them off which is obviously a, a bit of a downside with this method i would also recommend the northern wind here for obvious reasons like if you can freeze all of them you can kill out all of them really fast and they won't do damage to you and everything right so it can be utilized very well here in this scenario seeing as this will make your job a lot easier to summarize this method is obviously very good in other scenarios than just leveling up your iron die it has a lot of enemies which if you're decent at combat can be a faster method than the first one however there will be times where there are just too many enemies for you to kill with your iron die which can be a bit frustrating and time consuming i hate portals the last method we will take a look at today involves the sand crabs from the quest throughout space and time with Avalar. This is a main quest, there's no way you can skip this quest with any previous choices. Every player that wants to finish this game have to play through this quest. During your time in the first world or the so-called desert world, at the end you will encounter sand crabs. And these sand crabs will respawn infinitely if you don't go through the portal. This is therefore obviously also a very very good method to level up your sword. I also would like you to pay attention to if you're playing with enemy upscaling on or not. If you aren't, then I would recommend you to turn it on since you should be pretty over leveled when doing this questline. If you're not doing it in new game plus obviously. This will make the sand cramps not die in like one or two hits, which makes the process of getting charged a lot easier and faster. This is obviously the only method that involves enemies that actually are meant for your silver sword, which makes this method very good and reliable. However, its obvious downside is that it's only available during a specific time of the story. So make sure to save this quest and utilize this opportunity once you get here to max out your iron diet. To conclude, these are my three favorite methods of leveling up my Erendite. They all have their pros and cons, and you should really look at what methods suit your preferences the most. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, just please let me know down below. Thanks for watching, I will see you in the next one.